Hi, everyone. Happy Friday of Memorial Day weekend. I'm Dylan McGee, the founder and executive producer of Makers, and welcome to Makers at Home. Um, we're really going into Memorial Day with a bang with um, my friend Kathy Najimy. You know her. She's a famous actress, producer, writer, director, all those things. Um, and on top of all of that, uh, feminism is sort of like in her DNA and races through her blood. Um, and so we're really excited to connect with her and hear what she's been working on and how she's doing during all of this craziness. And so let's get right to it. All right, Kathy, here I come. Dylan McGee, Kathy and Jimmy, best name ever. Hi, honey. Did you see that I dressed up for you? I love that so much. I thought I had every single Gloria t-shirt in the world. I'm so jealous. Well, we're gonna have to get you. This is by our our friend and producer, Amanda McCall, and she created them and even has a What Would Gloria Do, I think, website around it. So <laughs> I figured since we're mutual fans, that was my dress up for Kathy outfit. We are mutual fans. Am I high enough up here? My husband has Jerry rigged. Right now, my computer is on top of a huge candle and my phone is shoved inside my computer and I am sitting, see, say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi. Hey, Dan. <laughs> Wait. We're pretty good at this. Yeah. Yes, there we go. That's better. How's that? Uh, <laughs> hi. Hi. I think hi, that's a really nice backdrop. You know, sometimes I think people think, you know, just put a, a like bookshelf behind you and that's the best look, but you're a real director. You've got, you've given us depth of field, you know? <laughs> and I'm gonna have like day players coming in in the back and doing a spoken word poem <laughs> for you. Let's it's do awesome. it. Yes. How is your hair always looking good on these lives, Kathy? It, okay, so, uh, oh, good question. You know how you said, um, ask me to bring things that I yes, have yeah, with right now? Yeah, what are I the am, things getting you through? My friend, Jennifer, told me about, told me about this thing. Oh. This, and I, it's like the COVID catch of the year because, <laughs> right, here's the great thing. I mean, there's nothing really great about isolation. There's a couple things that you can choose to be positive about. And for me, it's that from the waist down, I am in dog hair covered sweats every single day of the week and I'm gonna miss it. Yeah. I'm gonna miss it, Dylan. I, I feel so comfortable in them. So dog hair covered sweats, and then this thing, and then your hair, my hair was wet 15 minutes ago, and then I just go. <sighs> Wait, but does it have any, is it heat? Is it like yes, a blow dryer? it's a blow dryer with a brush on it. So it's all in one. Oh my God. Cute, I mean, right? Well, I gave in. I was like, I'm curly. I know everyone thinks I have straight hair, but I don't. I want one of those. But see, if my hair was like your hair without me doing this to it, it would, you wouldn't be, it would make you very uncomfortable. It's like a crazy, frizzy Lebanese mess, but I'm well, proud. You look like the most beautiful Lebanese mess I ever seen. Oh, go on. <laughs> no, yeah. really, go Let's on. talk about. So, what else is give, give? Give me your other three items. Oh, my other three items. Okay, I keep I'm having to leave there. there. Your cut is great. You both look great. Yes, I agree. Oh, you both look great. You're even including me. Oh, and there's a little doggy. So this is Petey. Oh, Petey. Oh, Petey. Do you yeah. like those dog kisses? I, I love them, but he needs to learn consent, Petey, not until I say yes. Hillary no. loves the curly hair. Sorry, I'm getting a little positive reinforcement that I'm loving. Okay, the dog. I love that you go, oh, my friend Carmen is on. Hi, Carmen. Georgia Louise. Oh, I want the Gloria shirt. Let's just, love, like, look at comments all day. Look at that. I know it. I usually have to have my glasses, but it, I'm so close up. Hi, everybody. Mona, you get so nice. Anyway, this is Petey. Okay, hi, Petey. Lots of highs to Petey. How Petey, old is Petey? Petey, we think, you know, we rescue all of our dogs, so we're not ever sure, but we think Petey is about 12. Oh, Petey. How, how long have you had Petey? I've had Petey since he was, like, like born. We got oh, him, okay. like, we, yeah, we rescued him. He was, it was his, gonna be, his, no, I think he was a couple months old because it was gonna be his last um, day at the rescue before they sent him to doggy heaven. And um, we were lucky enough to get him. Adorable. And speaking of doggy heaven, his sister princess, oh. just well, a couple months ago, just went to doggy heaven. Oh. Was Petey sad? No, Petey keeps walking around the house just looking confused, like when's princess gonna come back from the yeah. bed? Um, but he's doing okay. You know, we, we're so lucky Dylan because 
we live um, a block and a half away from Central Park. Oh. So when all of my relatives, which who are very, you know, concerned and well-meaning, call and say, how is it? How's New York? Are you okay? And I say, look, at, a lot of people aren't okay. Most people aren't okay. There's many people who are sick and unemployed and poverty stricken and in the hospital and sad and but we live in a good apartment thank knock wood and we live a block and a half away from central park that's so amazing every day i don't have to change my dog hair covered sweatpants and i put my hair up on top of my head and we walk to the park and it's gorgeous out there it's gorgeous today and are you are you participating in the seven o'clock i that's one thing that i'm missing as a I was born and raised in Manhattan, and I'm out here in Westchester, and I just, when I hear the cheers, I just want to be there. It's, it's the most fun part of the day. Yeah. So, because you know me, I love a good activist. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> and like, my daughter, Sammy, will say, Mom, you like, you haven't like stirred for three hours, and now you're shaking tambourines at the, air, at the window. I really, really love it. Why are you in Westchester? Do you have a place in Manhattan as well, or just LA? I live, I live out in Westchester. You live in Westchester. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. That's a great place to be right now. I know. I've been lucky. I get to go out and walk and do all those okay. kind of things. Dylan, how is it there in your neighborhood? Are people Happy. out about? I'm interviewing you. I know. I know. Come it's on. But you're such an interviewer. You care about other people, but... Today, we get to talk about you. What's your <laughs> third item? Let's move on. Yeah. Oh, my third item, oh, is, um, well, of course, this has to always be there. Sorry, people, I have to, I'm addicted. Wait, uh, so are you going? Is it open? It's, it just opened about two weeks ago. So oh, my Starbucks lovers, wow. So my sweet husband attempted for two and a half months to make my coffee, like almost authentically, and he got very close. But it opened, but you can't go in. You call ahead of time. There's an app on your phone. Thank you, Starbucks. I'm going to plug this. And you order what you want. And then you go down, and there's a six-foot table, and you stand behind it, and they hand you your stuff, and then you go. And oh they, write cute, they write cute things now. Be someone's friend today, it says. Oh, oh wait. All these people were telling me that you can get um, Starbucks in Westchester. I saw Chappaqua. I might have to copy you, Kathy. I didn't know they were open. Wait, so what is your, what's your go-to drink, someone asked. Okay, I get a, this is so fun, just in case something happens to Dan, you all can go fetch it for me. <laughs> I get a Vente Decaf Americano almond milk with two stevias. Come on, what does that even mean? <laughs> Wait, say it slower. Vente, that's Vente, big. big. Decaf, because I, you know I already run on a high energy level. We hear ya. Yeah, we know we Kathy needs little caffeine. Okay. Decaf you know, Americano with almond milk. Because uh, you know, you want to stay away from the dairy. The dairy yes. is good for flesh. The evil dairy. The evil dairy. And then two stevias, which is my sugar of choice. It's like a healthy non sugar sugar. But I also don't I remember that you're a bubble tea lover. I love bubble tea so much. In fact, when you said your favorite things, I said to Danny, Where can we get a bubble tea? We have to get a bubble tea. <laughs> Um, I love bubble tea, but we haven't found a place that will deliver it yet. And then I have this, which I keep at my desk, which is my favorite thing. It's a character I did for 13 years called Peggy Hill for King of the Hill. Of and, she, and one of her big lines was vagina. And so, oh a, my. isn't that cool? So an oh illustrator, my. one of the illustrators um, of King of the Hill sent me this. Don't you feel like that should be on a tee? It looks sort of the same style as my t-shirt. Oh. I want one of those. I want a vagina one. Dylan, we're going to be rich. That's a good <gasps> idea. It's who knew except we were for, millions. Except yeah. for the people who drew it and created the character. But we'll get like five cents each. That, who cares? I know. Every little bit helps. Every, it, this thing's by my desk. This was above. You know that um, Gloria is a friend of both of ours. And um, you know that I, I Zoom with her and three other women every other night, and it just keeps me alive. It, I know, and it's so great. And this was above um, her desk in the Ms. Magazine offices in the 70s. And it's, it was this. Can you read this, honey? It's backwards, but oh. let me see how I can. Uh... It's, um, it says, it's 10 o'clock at night. Do you know where your clitoris is? <laughs> and then there's Gloria's in the background there. But... Oh, my God. I mean, we're getting pretty racy on this makers at home. I mean, we're vaginas and clitorises. It's makers. Where else can you do it? I know. Feel free. Let's keep them going. What else have we got? Wait, one of the things I love about you mm -hmm. um, is that you're such a, a gamer. And I know, I remember 
when you were talking to Katie a couple weeks ago, you were talking about this game that you and Mary McCormick, who I went to college with. You um, did? Yes, yes, we acted so, together. She's so smart, isn't she really smart? And witty, and I mean, the two of you together, I can barely stand the combo of you. But you're creating a game of some online virtual, like you tell me. Well, I can't say too much because it's in development. Okay. But um, we create, you know, I play games with Mary and I play games. That's, you know, I miss a couple things. I miss the manicurist a lot. I miss the, <laughs> like my colorist friend who does my roots. I miss that a lot. Um, I miss my colonist. I get colonics. <laughs> I miss her. And I miss game night because we had game night about every other week. But we can't do that right now. But Mary's a gamer too. And we're both gamers. And we were talking about like, what we could do and we thought what if people could play games at home with their by themselves or with somebody from their family or their roommate against somebody else across the country or in actually in another country with their phone and so we created this home game and um you know apple is looking at it now we'll see we'll see who wants it all right and we're both I the coaches because we're both sycophant game show players and All right. Like, well, I think everybody watching this right now is saying, sounds awesome that you're doing a game. I think you'll have lots of, we'll, we'll send all of our makers people to you. I think yeah, it's I, think so. I mean, it's hard. It's because connecting, you know, we're getting a little Zoom fatigue, right? Yeah. And it feels like it needs that next level of oomph. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, Zoom, yeah. Here's the thing. Maybe you could advise me because you're one of the smartest women in the world. How do you get off a Zoom call without seeming like an <laughs> like, you know, uh, on and on and on you, you know what I mean? at the beginning you say this is 30 minutes everybody no matter what even if we're in the middle of something we just want to leave people wanting more and at the end of 30 minutes we're going to end it no but like a zoom like if like if me and you and four, four other people were just chit-chatting about what we had for dinner and then I can't go oh you guys I have to go I have an appointment I don't nobody has anything <laughs> Elizabeth, you're our favorite. Our producer at uh, Makers is saying, do we need some sort of sound effect that says, ding, 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 ding. timer. I got to to go. How much do we love Elizabeth, man? We, we pretty much love her. I love Makers. Does everybody know how cool Makers is and that you are one of the founding mothers of it? It's so cool. I mean, I don't know how I happened upon it. Was it Gloria? How did I get hooked up with you? I, I think, no, you know what it was? It was that, didn't we want to do the real life stories? Yeah, I don't know who, who, who. I think uh, it was Amy Richards. Oh, Amy Richards, there you go. I think it was Amy Richards. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, um, well, this is actually an interesting topic. I mean, Kathy, I feel like you have this group of comedian pals and you're all just like, you know, I feel like they all revere you, first of all. Like, I feel like you're the queen of comedy and uh, it's true. I'm sorry. Do that. Anyway, go ahead. Just say thank you. <laughs> thank um, you. And, you know, I, and so I wonder if you're tapping into all your besties, comedians during this COVID thing to keep everyone happy and smiling. Well, you know, a lot of them I got really close to because of makers, because when we hooked up and we started curating these, do, have we talked about that? Do they know what we No, did let's together? talk about it. Let's tell them. So we, we, we contacted women that were friends of mine and friends of yours, women who are known for different things. And we asked them to work with me for a couple of months to curate these like 10 to 15 minute pieces, something about their life that people don't know, something deep and dark or funny or important to them that they haven't gotten to talk about on a panel on a talk show. So they're like essays, but they aren't they just heartwarming and brave and I, I mean, give examples too. like Deborah Messing was amazing. And she talked about how she, you know, her nose, her nose and how she grew up in a Jewish family in a not Jewish friendly neighborhood and just sort of what she went through and, and what helped her become who she is now. And Amy Schumer did a, a beautiful piece about love and acceptance and dating and Olivia Wilde, who's a genius and Rosie Perez and Gabriel Sidibe, one of my favorite pieces. Oh ever in the world. I mean, so Mary McCormick did it with us once, but um, it's just something that we've never really witnessed before is these women talking, not for five minutes on a panel and not in a whole book, but talking for 10 minutes about something that made them them or affected them. And it's one of the, one of the best jobs I've ever had. Don't you think we still need to turn that into something? Yes, I do. Yeah, me too. Because now there are all kinds of things, platforms, that's a new word, content. 
I know. It's so exciting. So what other things have you got going on? Ms. Are you doing your Ms. and Gloria show? Yes. Yes. We're working on God. Oh, my God. It's been eight years. But we're getting very close. We just had some really good news. Um, I almost spilled the beans when I interviewed with Katie. But we have two women interested who are both writers that want to work together. And one of them is a, one of the most revered filmmaker, writers, feminist of all time. And another is um, new on the scene and ha had a hit Broadway show about fairness and justice in the Constitution. Oh, can I, don't, can I don't guess? guess. Can I guess? <laughs> no, don't guess because there are no contracts. But, uh, oh. but let me just say, you know this. Like, you work on something literally for years, and then you get to a high point, and then something happens, and it falls away. And you can either get beat down by it, which I have several times where I'm just like, Someone let's... just guessed in the comments, but I didn't see it. They probably were right. Yeah, they uh, were right. But you, you just have, and then you have a period of like feeling sorry for yourself for three days that you worked so hard and then almost got there, but then the network or the writer, and then you pick yourself up. And this means so much to me because I know the women of Ms. And no story has been told correctly about them ever. They're hilarious. You know some of them. They're so funny. They're so witty. They're so smart. And that period of time reflected the rest of our futures right you know what i mean it was everything to have the rights we have right now i mean there's gloria there's letty there's suzanne there's i mean so many uh, pat and um th those women need to have their their voices told so oh, we're really so trying excited. to work on the story oh, great well makers can't wait to promote it and have you been watching mrs america speaking of that yes i watched a couple okay should we leave it there you know, here's the thing. Do oh, I love the yeah, women? I love, I love the women involved. Some of the actresses are really good friends of mine who I've worked with. I'm so glad they have worked. I, I just wish that the story of the women in the women's movement weren't being told through the eyes of a woman who is not a feminist. And, you know, one of the things Gloria maintains is that, that it wasn't Phyllis Schlafly who put the ERA through. It was the insurance companies. Right. And so, you know, but look at, I mean, the more women employed directors, producers, stories about women, I'm all for it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I There's, agree. Yeah. There are more stories. There's more stories to be told. <laughs> all right. What else have we got for you? Um, I don't oh, know. No. I, I want to talk about um, uh, your My Moment book, too. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, we have a deal. I have to flip up because I'm getting texts on my phone. Um, we have a deal with Simon & Schuster. Again, flickety flick, flick. Flick, flick. That's like Elizabeth Bonell does that. No wonder you two love each other so much. <laughs> God, I love Elizabeth. Um, and we're putting together a book with um, Shelley Wright, who is a brilliant um, out country singer, successful woman. Her wife, Lauren, Kristen Chenoweth, who is one of my best friends, and Linda Perry, who's Linda Perry. Come on. Okay. And we're, we're like calling all these stories from women about what was the moment that you chose to speak up for yourself. Tell about in a paragraph or a sentence or a page or however long you want, what was that moment where you fought, fought for yourself? Mm -hmm. And the entries are so moving as you can imagine and funny and just great. So when will that come out? I don't know. When, what day is it? What time is it? Know. Who are you? I Who am I? How are you feeling about re-entry? I'm getting really nervous. I get anxious when I hear people are getting together and I don't know it feels like I want it to happen but I don't want it to happen do you know what I mean do you feel that I know exactly what you mean look at like I said do I hate the death and despair and destruction and uh, homelessness and I mean all this stuff I and I hate it but I, I got to tell you what I like about it yeah, I like that I get to be with my family a lot, which some some families aren't working out for us. It's fun or work, it's working out, knock wood. And my dog and I don't have to get in a cab and get stuck on the streets and be late and be like, oh, I'm coming, Dylan. I'll be there in a minute. Like I like I like wearing sweatpants covered in dog hair. There's some things, and maybe I'm not as social a person as I thought I was. Yeah, I, I was going to say, what have you learned about yourself that you didn't know? It sounds like that's it. Yeah, and I've also learned a couple other things. I've learned that I can cry. I'm not a big crier. I don't know about you, but like there's something that I skipped 
go, um, identifying something sad and I skipped an emotional part and went right to the fixing it part, which is helpful and I'm proud of it. But that in between part of being sad and emotional and even if you don't have a solution, but you just allow yourself. Yeah. So every, once in a while I'll cry and go, oh shit, I'm crying, that's crazy. And I've been, this is insane, I've been meditating five minutes a day I can do, but during it I keep a pen because in my head I go, I'm meditating and I go, oh, call Dylan back, call Dylan back. Right, 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 right. Meditating, meditating. apples, need apples. What do I got? So I just have a little piece of paper, but five minutes a day is better than nothing, right? I mean, I love that because it's been meditating for me is I think we're both made the same way. We both have our own natural caffeine that that we create. Mm -hmm. And so meditating is really hard, but it's hard. And that's my problem is that my mind is racing, but maybe that's a good technique of just getting put a piece of paper and a pencil in front of you and make it be okay that you just during it and then you go back to the breathing because even if it ends up being 3 minutes, it's 3 minutes more than you did. But do you feel better at the end? I do feel better. I think I make better decisions because sometimes I get really angry about what's happening in the world. And, you know, sometimes I can get judgmental and it just makes me shh for a minute, mm -hmm. just like shh for a second. Also, this is interesting. You know what I realized the other day? This is one of the first periods of time that I haven't been actively losing weight or gaining weight. It's just consistent or thinking about it. No, not thinking about it. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. interesting? It's fabulous. So I'm going to take that little nugget with me in my yeah. backpack. Me too. Like, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Who cares? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> but are you cooking more? I'm co I am cooking more, which I really like. I tend to order too many groceries, and I grew up kind of poor, so I'm a little bit sensitive about things going bad. So if I see a broccoli that's been there two days, I have to make a broccoli item <laughs> or, a, or a cauliflower item. So I've been cooking. I cooked eggplant parmesan one night. And I, cook, I do a lot of roast vegetables. And um, Danny, what else do I cook? Oh, he's gone. He's long gone. Um, yeah, I love cooking. What about you? Uh, I One of the things I've learned about myself through all of this is that I can cook. I mean, I never, I, I sort of put myself in that bucket. I don't cook, it's fine. I do lots of other things, but I'm not a, but I, I, I was like, I can do it and like it. It's kind of peaceful. I don't like the cleaning up afterwards part, but no. it's kind of a peaceful thing. I, I do really like it. And my mom was the greatest cook on earth. I don't cook anything like she does, but I like it. I think it's like a fine little break. It's a little respite and you know, the family seems to like it. So, and my daughter who's never cooked anything, she's been cooking lately too. See, that's fun. I know yeah. the, the bonding thing. I have my 18 year old is, is in there cooking with me and it's been pretty it's good, good, right? I like, yeah. I like that she's here. I love yeah. her so much. And I, and I wake up and she's playing piano or playing guitar. And I think, um, be in this moment, Kathy, like right. appreciate this moment where you hear your kid playing piano out there. She has a, an album coming out in a month, her first album. Yay. Oh my God, so many. <laughs> any, oh, any Lebanese food dishes? Lots of yes. about that. Thanks for asking that. Well, my husband's obsessed with fataya. Fataya are like little triangles, spinach triangles. Love. We're on our like 20th attempt to make them as good as my mom's. And sometimes one will come out okay. <laughs> but yeah, I love cooking Lebanese food. I love, I love cooking luby. Tabbouleh is a lot. Like you have to start in the morning, you have to salt the crushed wheat, the bulbul. So is, is, does that person, are they Lebanese? Are, tell them. Mm, yes. No. Yes, it's delicious. Angela is here. I don't know if you're Lebanese. Yeah. I no. don't think she is. Lebanese food's the best food. I may know her. Who, um, all right, Kathy, we only have five minutes. It goes by so fast, doesn't it? No. Uh, um, okay. So my, I guess one thing I really want to know, because I know you're a big LGBTQ activist, which I love, and we share that together. And it's, you know, June is pride month and no parade and i'm just curious if you have any plans or you're thinking about anything to celebrate pride month i mean yes. every month is pride month by the way but i know it but it was so fun last year because me and this woman i work with mona she's probably watching mona yuki and our friend jake we dressed up in our rainbow clothes i have um a t-shirt that says um I don't know, something queer as me or something. And um, we, 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 we broke into the actual parade. So we were in the parade, just walking with our Starbucks and our bags. <laughs> that was the most fun. But um, I'm friends with uh, uh, one of the most powerful, influential 
one of the best people that have come out to help the world right now is Lena Waithe. Oh, freaking... Mona loves you. Hi, Mona. Um, Lena Waithe is a freaking miracle. And so she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm crocheting my crotchless rainbow jumpsuit right now. But I, we're going to do a lot of virtual things, parties and Zooms and um, things with the LGBT Center in New York. So I'll be all over the internet in my crotchless one piece. Oh, my God. Rainbow, though. Rainbow. Really? Really? That's <laughs> Lena Waithe is the greatest. She is the greatest. In fact, yes. I think Elizabeth said you two, there was something going on last night at like 2 a.m. With, Le with Lena. Yeah, she's really funny and really supportive. She's just kind of a miracle that I didn't know about and then all of a sudden knew, knew about it. And then I met her and she came over and we ate, you know, burgers, veggie burgers for me. Don't go crazy, people. And, um, we just, she's just one of the most important people of this century, I think. She's killing it. Oh, well, you're killing it, and we love you, and you're like the activist goddess in our world. Um, Thank you. Unstoppable. I um, want to say one thing before we yeah. end. You know, we both do a lot of political work, and our hearts are in a lot of places and all that, but if I had to really shrink it down to one thing, one thing to say, United States and the planet and the rest of the world and our health and our dignity and our rights and the ERA and our Supreme Court and all in our environment. I go to the park now and I actually hear the birds. Even in three months, things are different. The birds are having a freaking scavenger hunt right now. They're having such a good time. Is no matter how you feel about any of the nominees before, our nominee now is Joe Biden. And our literally only way out of Trump America and this bull that we've been living in is to all rally around Biden with 100% from the bottom of our vaginas, with 100% of our being and our- With our crotchless heart, outfits. With our crotchless outfits is no matter what, you have to vote, get your friends to vote and help those who aren't able to get to the voting place, get to the voting place because then, it, look, we'll still have a lot of things to deal with, but so much of this din, this sadness, this suffering, I mean, we could have never imagined this, although we did. Um, just Biden, 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 vote, vote, vote. vote. Yeah, I know. But freaking vote. Vote. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Do that again. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I love you so much. Dylan, you're such an you're important right, person in the right, world and a yes. fun friend. I love you. You are, um, you, the gift I want to give to everybody is go right now and watch Kathy's Maker's Piece and vote. <laughs> All right, Thanks. Kathy. Bye, honey. Love Thanks you so much. What you do. Mwah. Bye. Okay. I mean, if that isn't one of the most fun makers at home, I don't know what is. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks for being such a great, loyal audience. Thank you to the team makers. Have a great Memorial Day weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.